uh, welcome from New Zealand. It's been a pleasure to back to the EIT to give a talk on some of the work that we are carrying on in the Pacific Island. Uh, I'll be talking today on the impact-based early warning system in the Pacific perspectives. As last two weeks, I think everyone was quite busy just spending their time looking at the uh, COP26, and there has been a, so much information product has been discussing about the uh, climate change impact, how we can actually reduce our emission, as well as lots of commitment. And there are, other than the COP26 or Paris Agreement, we are also trying to chasing the Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction, sustainable development goal, as well as new urban agenda. All the global framework who are trying to chasing the 2030 global agenda are highly acknowledge the multi-hazard impact-based early warning system. And that's one of the key to reducing our uh, damages as well as saving our lives. So in that perspective, it's quite important to having a multi-hazard impact-based forecasting system in place. However, the system is quite complex in a sense, as you can see on the right left side diagram, it's, it has a four dimensional activities. We are trying to chase what's going to happen from hour to century. On the other side, we're trying to understand what could contribute to the global, national, subnational, as well as local aspect. Also, we need to understand the hazard exposure, vulnerability, as well as overall risk, and then how those are actually impacting to our differential sector in the infrastructure, ecology, and economic. So it's, it's a, not a one easy way to solve the problem, but rather than actually quite um, multi-agency coordination as well as integration is quite important. Um, as you can see that when you are trying to look at from climate change aspect, starting with the uh, hour to century, there are actually different product exist, um, starting with our weather forecast, uh, mid-range forecast, seasonal forecast, sub-seasonal forecast, and then climate change product projection. And each of those forecasts has a different variability. It brings different climate-related or weather-related hazard, and it has a different forecast lead time as well. So how those trying to impact our, as a personal, as a sector, or as a society is quite important to understand and defining their mitigation aspect. If I just go back a little bit on the <coughs> history of the early warning systems, as you can see that till 1980s, we were trying to focus more on the saving lives. And then after 1990, it was more on the saving lives and livelihood systems. In 2000, we were talking more about the, how actually we can bring some people-centered approach or people-centered uh, early warning system. And currently, we're trying to uh, operationalize with lots of innovation and emerging forecasts with new technologies such as ensemble or probabilistic forecasting. And you can see that throughout the time frame, 1961 to right now, with different actually global agenda try to force us to uh, develop these activities. However, there are actually several challenges in uh, setting up or implementing as well as see some impact on early warning system in the, in the community or in the as, as a country. There are always some unrealistic pressure on science to make a difference. As I said, uh, science has some limitation. As a human being or as a sector, we may have a differential uh, lead time requirement. So for, for an example, we may like to have a quite reliable a 10 days forecast or 15 days forecast or month long forecast, but I think you're not able to get that kind of you know accuracy when it goes to the longer lead time. And then uh, there are also a lot of advanced research. Those are not actually coming to the operational domain. And many of those operational forecasting actually doesn't actually reflect to the decision making process. Uh, communication as well as risk communication is quite a problematic. Um, we often actually doesn't understand how a data could be translated to an information and how the information could be created knowledge. 
And when you don't able to generate those kind of information, there is actually um, fatigue, there is a hesitancy to accept those kind of information. And it's the same could be related with the uh, uh, vaccine hesitancy that you can see in the, in, the, in, the, in the community at this moment. And also there are always actually uh, lessons that has identified, but we actually doesn't learn the lessons. Uh, we established a, an end-to-end multi-hazard early warning system framework where actually we tried to talk about 10 essential elements um, to achieve the same day framework goal target G, which is uh, all the countries who signed the send the agreement, uh, they should have a um, national level early warning system in place. And to having those things, as you can see, it's become a system of a system. So it has started with the institutional development, is, as well as art, data observation, information generation, modeling, impact-based forecast generation, how the warning product could be generated, how it will be disseminated, what are the means of communication, and then how actually you translate those communication into a interpretation, risk assessment, as well as uh, interpret and translate those risks so that actually our community could understand and respond or develop some sort of response uh, framework to, to uh, manage those consequences. Uh, and also as one of the critical part of early warning system is that sending the information to the people who are actually needed the most and more, more early rather than late. And as well as to understand what are that information means, what that risk, uh, what, what the hazard forecasting means to them, what kind of risk it generating. So understanding the overall risk assessment to their area what are their risk governance is working in the com community or at the national level, how we do the risk register, as well as risk awareness and risk perception is quite important. If we don't have those combination, we often actually don't build trust. And then you can actually do that risk interpretation as well as risk uh, treatment. And we often actually doesn't try to look at those very granularity in the risk communication aspect. And that's maybe the one of the reason that often you will see uh, the risk has or warning system has been failed because uh, community may didn't receive the information or community may receive but didn't actually uh, did any didn't do any action uh, we also try to establish uh, um, and, and similar activities we try to implement right now in fiji which is working quite well as you can see uh, for fiji um, we established the cyclone as well as tsunami early warning system in 2017 and 2019. And from there on, actually, the casualty drastically actually reduced in the country. Uh, a similar kind of project we established in Solomon Island, Fiji, Tonga, as well as Samoa. Um, they are actually quite working well. Now we are trying to working more towards how actually we can combine overall actually weather and climate into one single platform so that we can understand our transitional risk as well as physical risk and then from there on we actually enable some sort of loss modeling or at least financial implication and then based on that we, we can develop some sort of climate mitigation as well as adaptation measures for our community An example here is um, a drought early warning system as you can see often actually we try to look at or drought or seasonal forecasting in, in a one single parameter, but there are actually a lot of systems that play around in the Pacific and how actually we try to combine those climate indices, drought indices, as well as hydrometeorological variable to, to combine and create a sort of differential modeling using either regression of time series or ensemble to generate some sort of more um, accurate or more reliable information for our uh, agro-industry or other uh, differential uh, sectors. Uh, here is an example that we set up a flood early warning system recently for Honiara, uh, where they try to look at more on the regional aspect that based on the uh, weather, weather, weather forecasting to generate some flash flood as well as 
um, urban flooding aspect. And then uh, once they understand the weather phenomena for the next three to seven days, that, that trigger to a more hydrological or river level forecasting system. And that that also triggered to a community based early warning system where they have a small gauge, automatic gauge actually. If that cross any particular threshold, that they start allowing alert to the community level. And another example here in New Zealand on how actually the long range forecasting and how you can actually dealing with uncertainty. Obviously, as I said, that when you go more late term, it actually reduces your accuracy level, but you can actually take differential decision, either a strategical decision planning or tactical action, or even an application based on the differential uh, lead time forecasting. Uh, an impact-based forecasting example, this is from Tonga, where we try to generate for various uh, weather as well as um, extreme weather as well as uh, differential hazard forecasting and how that could create an impact for various sectors like airport authority, telco authority, or port authority. And as you can see, the uh, sector has the differential uh, risk ranking and then differential impact. So we actually need to provide them more customized information for their um, decision making process. And then finally, just an example that also you need to go through a lot of capacity building as well as um, awareness programs through a, we called uh, one of the programs here in New Zealand is Get Ready, Get Through, uh, which is a, using a four hour principle, how actually you make sure that people are actually have enough preparation and simulation exercise and as well as understanding about the risks so that actually they can actually take some appropriate action when the time comes. I think that's basically all from my presentation and I really thank you so much for joining today and it's been a pleasure to uh, join with uh, my old fellow as well as uh, Elman after a long time. Thanks.